call to order the Board of Supervisors meeting for Monday, January 19th at 7 p.m. to please rise. Well, let me call to order, I should say, and pledge allegiance. Thank you. Roll call to establish a quorum, please. Supervisor Richard Weidman. Here. Supervisor Chuck Tice. Here. Vice Chairman Dan Wolfel. Here. And Supervisor John Stabenus. Here. And Leo's excused for this meeting. All right. Uh, next item on our agenda is the meet and greet and public participation. So why don't we just start with Linda. Introduce yourself, if you would, as we go around the room. Linda. Linda Waite, Clerk Treasurer for the Town of Sebastopol. My address is 5075 Bluff Court. Dick Weidman, uh, Board Supervisor, 4108. South Country View Road. Chuck Tice, uh, Supervisor, live on Bayshore Drive, 4771. Supervisor Dan Wolfel, live on Bark Road. John Stobnes, I live at 3811 Whitefish Bay Road. If you introduce yourself, Miss. I'm Jacqueline Sawyer, I'm at 752 Road, Chicago. John Sawyer, same address. Thank you. Tony Hain, Matthew Road. Mary Ellen Hain, Matthew Road. My name is Nick Wilder, I'm with Road Mutual Insurance, and I live in the township of Massawapi on Hammersh Road. Uh, Nick, you're the uh, fellow that will be taking over for Mr. Harold? Yep, um, I'm taking over for now. Okay, nice to meet you. Thank you for coming this or this afternoon. <coughs> Let's go to the evening, be a lot better. Okay. Um, anybody? Mr. Chapman. I'm sorry, Miss Laddie. Hi, I'm Laddie Chapman, Glenn Drive. <laughs> that was close. All right. Uh, is there anyone that would like to have any public participation before we get into the meat of the meeting? No comments on anything? Okay. Hearing none, uh, let's talk about the agenda. Linda, has the agenda been properly noticed? It has been. All right. And we approve the agenda as printed. Second. All right. Go ahead. Would you like me to introduce myself a little bit more during the meet and greet and public participation part? Well, we actually, that's where we were. I know. I, oh. I didn't realize it at first that I was looking through the agenda and realized there might not be another spot for me to just introduce myself, do a little background, if you guys are interested. Well, let me just uh, finish up on the adoption of the agenda and we'll back up for just a minute there, okay? okay. So we have a motion by Chuck, a second by uh, Dick. To accept the, <coughs> excuse me, to approve the agenda. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None. Passed. All right. Let's just back up for a minute, please. Mm -hmm. Since you did come to the meeting for that purpose, why don't you just give us a little bit of background on yourself and what the transition will be with rural insurance, correct? Yep. Thank you. Okay. Well, I'm Nick Weldon. I've been working with Dell for about four and a half, five years. I was assistant for two years and I'm at home. He is now transitioning into retirement, so I'll be taking over the duties, and don't worry, I've been, my hand's been in it the entire time. I've spoke with Linda numerous times, you know, helping out. Since Dell's just kind of transitioning into retirement, he can, he's still able to help me and come and if there's any questions, we st I still use him as a resource. Um, I grew up on a little Sturgeon area. I graduated in 2004 from Southern Door, and that's about it. Unless you guys have any other questions. How long do you uh, think Dell will be around? Forever. He's actually my ex-father-in-law, so I know where he lives. Uh, if you call him, go there whenever. <laughs> Unless he changes his cell phone number and his house number, he's pretty much stuck with me. And he knows it. All right. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you for coming this evening. Thank you. Next on, on the agenda is the minutes, approval of minutes from the supervisor's meeting on December 15th. I'll make a motion to approve the meeting. Uh, minutes for December 15th. I'll second that. Motion by John, second by Chuck. Any comments, changes, anything? If not, please signify your approval by saying aye. 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 Opposed, not. 
carried. All right. Financial reports for the month of December. Any questions, comments? And maybe I should start with Linda in case there's anything on there that you'd like to explain or go into any detail on, Linda? Well, obviously, our um, bank balances as of December 30. First, 2014 are quite healthy because we have um, 2014 real estate taxes deposited and those were not dispersed until January 15th. Uh, we also have the budget versus actual January through December 2014. Um, those numbers may change a bit as um, we receive uh, additional room tax. Um, I'm waiting for the uh, December 31st billing from Door County Highway Department, which will probably have some snow plowing on it. Other than that, everything is pretty self-explanatory. You should mention that I signed a lot of checks for close to a million dollars, so we've managed to deplete uh, a fair amount of, of that that money right, yeah. just last week, or in the last week. But it's not something you do every day, is sign checks for that. No. All right. Anybody else have any comments? As it, as it stands yeah. right now, are we uh, we're roughly $2,200 over on the snow plowing budget? Uh, I thought we were under. This is on page um, two, about right. the eighth line. Up yep. the if, end. if you look on page two of the budget versus actual, yeah. about one third up from the bottom. Snow removal, 87,503 is our actual number. Uh, we have budgeted 90,000, so I expect we're going to be very, very close to that 97, or 90,000. We had a fair amount of snow in December. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. I think we'll be pretty close, we unlike last year. Considering we used to budget forty to $45,000, so we've exceeded that significantly. Okay. I'm not hearing any other <coughs> comments. Unless John, did you say you had something? Question on something? No? Okay. If not, we'll put these documents on file. All right. Next item is oral committee reports and committee minutes. Um, in your packet, the only committee minutes that we have are from the Tourism Zone Commission, and those were from the November 20th meeting in Egg Harbor. Um, does anyone have any verbal reports that they would like to make? The, the Door County Tourism Zone Commission uh, at our previous, one of our previous meetings uh, decided to change the logo. And the top, I can pass this around so people can see, but the top picture was the original logo we had ch chose when we started the organization. The one on the bottom is the one we will be using now and into the future. So people would like to. Other than that, everything is going good with the tourism zone. Um, numbers for November are up about 2.5%. Uh, one more month before we get into the December numbers. But all in all, tourism has been up over the year. Uh, looks like it might roll in there at about a 3% increase over last year. Good. Any other comments? Any other committee? Any other yeah, the cable committee met, and I think we'll, we'll discuss that item under, um, under pending business. Right. Item D? Yeah. Okay. We'll talk about that then. Mm -hmm. uh, then we'll take these. If anybody in the, wants to be on the plan commission, we're still short three people. Um, and if one of the members cannot show up, we cannot have a meeting because we need the quorum. First, we have seven members and we're short three. So if anybody wants to volunteer, please come forward. I'll be running an ad in the cable station. Okay. Okay. <coughs> we'll take the minutes and we'll put them on the file. <coughs> Uh, next item of business will be licenses, licenses and permits. Um, you have a copy of that in your packet. As you can see, it was an extremely busy month for new building permits. I think one. Uh, it's a pretty quiet, pretty quiet month. You need a building permit to put a furnace in? I believe that this is if it's a new furnace, if a replacement. I'm not positive, but I think that's the case. Okay. This is something I hadn't seen before. 
He yes. might be changing the service. You know, it might have been a service upgrade or something, too. Okay. You see it as a separate item underneath new construction, but generally I haven't noticed it myself under the other. But limited activity in that regard. Okay. Under pending business, we, uh, this is a carryover item from last month. We talked about street lighting. And we had Linda do a little homework on that, and so I'll ask her to maybe fill in the details, if you don't mind, Linda. Um, I really don't have anything new to report from last month. Um, I did include in your packets estimates and actuals, what we're paying right now. Jason Berry from Sturgeon Bay Utilities did come and pick up the two lighting fixtures that I had on display here last month. Um, so, but he has not given me any locations in Sturgeon Bay where the board could actually see a sample of the LED lighting, but I found one. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's on the corner of Texas Street and um, maybe like 10th Avenue or so right off of Memorial Drive. And uh, it does make the intersection brighter. So perhaps you'll notice in the bills where we did pay for the replacement of an electric eye and a bulb, though that was only like $8 or whatever, perhaps the next time one of our fixtures falls apart or falls off or is damaged, we might want to try one of these LEDs. Um, obviously it costs more, you know, $235 to $250 or so, but Maybe the next time one of our Sturgeon Bay Utility fixtures needs replacement, we could try the LED and see what the cost is compared to our um, high sodium, high pressure sodium bulbs. I think that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, I think you did actually find some information out though regarding WPS, did you not? Oh yes, WPS. They do not charge us when a bulb burns out in one of their WPS pic, um, fixtures, which we do have 27 of those. We have 27 WPS fixtures and nine Sturgeon Bay utility fixtures. WPS does not charge us when they replace a bulb or do any maintenance. And I talked to one of the representatives there. She said they are not contemplating replacing any of their fixtures at this point. So those, those actually belong to WPS? Correct. Okay. Which kind of surprised me. You'd think they'd be interested since so they do have everything going to try and reduce the amount of, mm -hmm. you know, <coughs> whatever, it doesn't always make sense, um, well, at any rate. Well, if they belong to them, are they interested in, uh, in, in upgrading their fixtures? No. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's not our problem. Well, I know, but... If they, we pay a flat fee. Regardless. Right. Okay. All right. Um, then what I think I'll do here, because I actually should have moved it up earlier, uh, we have the Sawyers here regarding a petition for grant of variance. So I think what I'll do, the one is a problem, is we'll move them up as the next item so they don't have to sit through all of this fun. And uh, I know they're looking forward to that. And um, what I'd like to do is to turn that portion of the meeting over to John, uh, who would normally do that through the planning committee. So, okay. John, you want to take us through that? Uh, yes, they... <coughs> Uh, John and Jackie Sawyer are here tonight, and um, they have a cottage on okay, 5346 West Shore Drive, and um, the, the committee, or not the committee, but the zoning regulation says that they got to have 20,000 square feet and 100 feet wide, and their property is 50.4 feet wide and they have 7,800 square uh, feet to build on and somehow there was, John can uh, talk a little later, but somehow there was three lots together and then two got sold off, right, prior to you. Um, so uh, I guess, would you want to say anything right now to show uh, exactly, I'm not exactly sure how this it's going to lay out, but you're, you're going to go behind and like on that back corner? Yeah, maybe I'll, I'll give the chronology of okay. the county on, but the interesting, the cottage was built in 1925, <laughs> so it's been there on a 50 foot lot ever since then. And what had happened, so if you look at the chronology, 
uh, prior to 1968 zoning, uh, Gordy Schumacher bought the cottage and he owned the 50 feet of the cottage, so it was a 50 foot lot. He then bought the 100 foot lot right to the south, uh, which they joined them with the intention that he came to the town and tried to have them divide it to get two 75 foot lots. So he looked at it as a money maker for him where he bought the cottage for 50 feet, bought the 100 foot lot next door, and then he joined them. So he had 150 feet. And then he came to the town and said, I'd like to get a variance to create two 70-foot, 75-foot lots. It was denied. And then so what happened is Gordy sold the 150 feet to John Seiler. So this guy kind of John Seiler's for a year or two or whatever. So then John sold the cottage to my mom and dad, Jackie and I. And we, he sold us 50 feet, and then he retained 100 feet next to us, and then he built the cottage. So the cottage since 1983, since we owned it, we wanted to minimal improvements, so uh, like putting a foundation under, you put a septic, we drilled a well so the ailers and uh, the other people, our neighbors could use the, you know, and get the water and everything. So then, finally now when I put in a petition to put an addition on, because the cottage is only 20 by 30 at the lower level, and upstairs it's 20 by 20. So uh, we're looking to put an addition on the back, you know, a nice size kitchen, because right now we're going like a small kitchen in there, or kitchen if you want to call it. And so when we petitioned, we were told by the county that we were allowed to build because the lot was so made or created after 1968. So by going through all the chronology, it was a lot for 50 years, and then Gordy Schumacher combined to try to get two lots, and then when he sold it all to John Seiler, John Legally, which was fine, he sold, or he kept 100 feet, but sold us 50. But there was nothing to tell us that, that there was anything wrong with that. So now when we petitioned for a building permit, which I assume was over the counter, uh, at that time Katie Miller was still there and said, oh boy, we got an issue because this is three and after. So said, she said, you're going to have to go through a variance. So that's how we ended up here right now. So the lot always was a 50 foot lot for, for like two years until Gordy tried to join them and the Bible and the town was going to die. <clears throat> so what we're proposing to do, uh, and again, I think I mentioned in the letter that uh, almost all of those six lots all to the north are all 50-foot lots. Right. And then the lot right next to us, which is that uh, side of the which, you know, we've been there for quite a few years in Eugene Aylers, and, you know, place uh, right next to us, and uh, right next to us on this other side of the 100-foot lot is the Terry's, and we let them use our cottage when their family comes up. So. Everybody gets along quite well there. Um, so what we're proposing to do is we want to hold the fair to money to work for our family because we're starting to have grandkids. Uh, so what we're trying to do is just put a kitchen dining area off the back and then with one bedroom up uh, so we can have you know, a little more space you know, for the kids and everybody. And that's what we're kind of uh, looking to do. Okay. So if you go off the back, are you you're moving your footprint closer to the lake. Is that no, what you mean no, by the no, back? No, no. no. Oh, okay. The, you're moving the, the way house, the, the cottage toward, is right here. Towards, towards the road. Right. Right. Towards the road. Away from yeah, towards the road. Okay, all right. Yeah, but, yeah. Yeah. Are you taking the front part of the cottage down then? That, no, that the it's not within the building zone? Yeah, that would right. So the cottage will stay as it is. You know, I guess the little kitchenette's going to come out. And then, uh, yeah, that's how it's going to change. Does that dash line represent the footprint of the new addition? Uh, it, that's what I didn't see. That. Uh, no, the dash line is a buildable area. So okay. oh. I'll give you. So you're not going over the top of your septic. No, uh, and actually, right now uh, the septic is a, a metal tank, and we're going to take that out. Ooh. We're going to put a concrete tank there. So if we get to do this, we're going to have a better situation there as well. So. Uh, But it's only approved for a holding tank. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what you were just pointing out. Oh, that's what's up there. Yeah, yeah. so there is this. This is the building area, so you're just putting that right there. Okay. Okay. okay, so thank you. Can I see that, Jeff? Sure. Sorry. So we kind of just want to add that a little bit more. All right. And that's 
that's all. This is the setback from the high water. Yeah. This is all the side setbacks. Okay. Yeah, that's it in a nutshell. Okay. Um, we're talking with uh, our other board member that is in the audience, Daryl. Um, and like I said, Dick, we, can, we couldn't have a meeting, but... Uh, I guess my comment is, is if you look at the, the drawing along Clark's Lake, there are a lot of lots that are 50 foot wide. I mean, if you, on the, right on the water, there are some that are 100. There's one that's 14 by 68. And I think that he is working well with the setbacks because he's Yeah, I, I would agree there's, there's a lot of exceptionally large homes that are, I would say, on small lots, on very small lots there. In fact, some of them, I, I can't imagine the setback being <laughs> more than five feet at the most. Um, I, uh, you know, and, and, and for that reason, you know, I would see, um, I would have no objection in this variance based on the, the present situation that exists there. And uh, maybe as a plus, uh, upgrading the, the septic system uh, would be a, a plus. Uh, at least we'd have a concrete only thing. Yeah, the sure. right. uh, Chuck, you got anything or Dan? Uh, I feel though well, this is the county planning department's problem. They allowed this 50-foot lot to be developed and sold again. You know, it's I don't know how that happened. <coughs> I don't know how that would have ever happened. Yeah. That, that is strange from the doings I've had with them. But uh, when was that? Eighty-three when you purchased it. Yeah. All the new construction is going to be within the buildable portion of this lot, right. as laid out on this map. Even though they're saying this lot <coughs> is not buildable. But well, that's the thing. I mean, they they go back and forth. I mean, they they give you a buildable place where you can build, but then they say, well, it's 50 feet wide, so you can't build. I mean, they're contradicting I themselves right now. I would yeah, like so. to see the cottage moved back the 40 foot uh, high water mark, but I don't think that's going to happen. Depending on the neighborhood, too, uh, anybody else's cottages in there, they, they can take a average of the two neighbors and, you know, for, for a new construction, so. Right. I'd, I'd say go with it. Uh, the majority of lots in the neighborhood are only 50 feet wide, and, and those people will be doing building and remodeling also. So. Right. I think the setbacks were five feet thick. Five feet? Ten yeah. feet on the sides they've got yeah, here. Ten feet on the sides. No, no, but back no. when the lots were created, because my right. grandparents were in that same situation, you know, okay. they could build. So, but they anyway, they each other. So I, I take it there's no feedback from any neighbors, positive or negative? Uh, only, I just talked to Eugene Ellis, who's on our uh, north, and then I talked to the carriers who are on our south, and they didn't have any. So we have no feedback from them? <coughs> I actually called them, you know, because when I talked to the county, and they said, you know, are you able to buy any property? So I talked to Eugene, and, and they said, well, that makes our lot too small, so, or, you know, right. so they can't do that. So I'm not going to worry about it. So, John, what's your pleasure? Um, I would make a motion to recommend to the uh, plan commission for to grant the variance. I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion from John, a second from Chuck to <coughs> support the request for a variance. Any other comments, questions? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Go okay. ahead. I'm sorry, Linda. No, go ahead and finish your vote. Then I'll we did. Okay. So and motion carried motion unanimously. Motion carried unanimously. Um, if you notice the cover letter from Susan Vanden Langenberg. Yes. The second paragraph says it encloses a town recommendation uh, form. Could I please have some direction on... Completing this form, for instance, obviously it's simple that 
the town recommends support for a variance, but they also have the reasons. So I'm thinking um, goes well with the neighborhood or um, and then also the second question is, is the proposal consistent with the town comprehensive plan? I believe we do support residential in that area. We're trying to get everybody's locked down to 50 feet. Okay. And then any concerns or objections? Apparently there are none. Uh, John, can you help her with that or do you want to just take it right now? Take it. I mean, uh, so I mean, I, there are no concerns or objections. I mean, I, I guess the, you know, up in the proposal, it does, it does fit with the comprehensive plan because most of the lots in that area are 50 foot wide. There's, yeah, there's a height that's, you know, um, and the, it was a, it was a lot. It does have a buildable portion on it, and now they got to go for a variance because it's only 50 feet wide. I, Okay. Sometimes I wonder, but... Do you need any more, want any more detail, Linda? Are you okay with that? Okay, so the reason for the town's decision, the okay. neighborhood supports the recommendation. It fits with, within the surrounding lots. It's within lots the surrounding within lots. Within the lots. Okay. Okay. neighborhood. Okay. I if you just use oh. Pat would be... Yeah, Pat would be. In the last five, six years, there have been three other variances in the 50-foot lots. Well, this is in that area. So in that area. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
you got to make up your mind. Yeah, yeah. We, well, we're going to get another one of these with a date on it. Then in March, we're we're going to have it on Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> the TBA still stands for the month of March, if you want to know. <laughs> April 21st. 21st. <laughs> the reason I had the note on there with the question mark move to the 27th in the event you did not want to hold an annual and a board meeting on the same night. So April 21st is a Tuesday, not a Monday. I will add the weekdays to the final product. So we need February 23rd. 23rd. So I will add the and weekdays. And that's on Monday. Yeah. Make it a little bit clearer. I guess. Mr. Okay. Next item is the Brigham property on East Town Line Road. Uh, I think you can see in your packet Leo's response to... Uh, to that issue, which of course there's no driveway permit on file and it was blocking the flow of water through the uh, property there, so it was removed last fall. Um, to my knowledge, I don't think we've heard anything back from uh, their attorney at all, have we, Linda? No, no response, and he did receive a copy of this agenda. So. Okay, so that's more or less an informational item for you. Very good letter. The next item is the Cable Program Director and Videographer's Agreement uh, with Laddie Chapman. And um, okay. Dick, I'll let you uh, right. run with that for a few well, minutes. Our, our Cable Advisory Committee met uh, last week and um, basically looked at or was request, request by our videographer to move the capital equipment balance from 2014 into the 2015 budget. The committee discussed it and thought it would be uh, fair and equitable to the unspent balance from 2014 to be moved into the 2015 budget, uh, giving that 2015 capital on the sheet that I handed out. Under line 15, moving the um, moving that to 7690 uh, to reflect the purchase of a new camera. Uh, reason being why it was delayed was to uh, get a better price uh, for that camera in 2015, which we did. Camera, camera and uh, necessary equipment for it to will cost 2606 or 26, approximately $2,600. Um, also in that capital outlay budget, uh, which was proposed uh, new PC for video editing, uh, for an estimate of $2,000, which still will leave a balance in the 215 budget. Um, the, the committee would request that the, the movement of, of that money from the 2014 budget into the 2015 budget for these two purchases. So did you address any of the concerns with the contract? That's next. Okay. <laughs> I got a couple, I guess I got more than a couple of questions. Um, on the, and I probably have the heart, the cart before the horse here with the uh, contractor agreement, but, but the intention of this, when we set this entire process up, was to have Laddie operate as an independent contractor. And as an independent contractor, um, typically what happens with an independent contractor is they supply the equipment. Um, now, I 
understand um, that when we started this out, and I don't even recall what year it all came about, um, there was a startup cost associated, and, and we weren't paying Laddie to, to, to any extent. And so I think what we did, or I guess what my take on it would be, is we kind of front-ended his equipment to get him started. But since we're well into this thing, um, I think the equipment should come as, as an expense from him as a contractor, and he can bill us back for the usage of his equipment and things. And for us to continue to supply equipment kind of contradicts the independent contractor. Right. Um, and then when we talk, I mean, because we do do a lot of things, and don't get me wrong, I think what Laddie does is great, but I, I think we've... That aspect of the contract. Uh, we also discussed that at our at our committee meeting. Um, the option that I suggested at the committee meeting was to make Laddie a town of Sebastopol employee. I mean, we've already invested considerable money in all the equipment already. Um, basically, everything. That is housed here is Thomas and Aspel property. Um, basically, everything that is used by the videographer is Thomas and Aspel property already. Um, it would be my suggestion that we create a Thomas and Aspel employee position as videographer to reflect the, well, the actual uh, practice that we have of providing the capital equipment for maintaining the channel. Um, it might be somewhat difficult to have an independent contractor come in with all the... More per year. More per year. And it, it basically is Social Security and Medicare payments. Now that's that's not any other overhead. Um, but then you know. he's a town employee, and he works for the county. He said he worked for Sister Bay too. Whose equipment is he going to use up there? Well, that would that would be an independent uh, effort on his part. See, I think no, it'd be our tools. It'd be our equipment. Our equipment. Yeah. Well, I, I think that I, I guess you know when this all started going back, I don't know how many years. Um, what was the fellow's name in Sturgeon Bay? God, his name escapes Tom me. Soik. Tom Soik, thank you. Was a contractor for the city of Sturgeon Bay. And they currently have a contractor that does their video work. Uh, I, I don't know the advantage um, to having him as an employee. I can't tell you I know the advantage as a contractor. But in, to my way of thinking, um, we, yes, we have made the investments for all of this stuff initially, and I understand from a startup perspective there wasn't, we didn't have deep pockets to, to go and make those investments, and so we did. But I think if it's going to stay as a contractor, then he should be making the investments for the camera or, some, or, or other pieces of equipment that support the application outside of what's in this office. Um, of course, we do, we do bill, I mean, but we're an employee would bill anybody. I mean, we have, well, I don't know what we bring in for. Uh, well, last year we paid fourteen. We paid $14,000 out for the videographer contract and for the station operation. And what do we bring in? But we don't, we don't charge some people and we charge others. And if we had him as an employee, I think you'd get into a whole other issue uh, in that he's recording things then which, which would be outside what you would call the typical role of an employee, i.e. taping Sister Bay town meeting or some of those different items. Can we charge Sister Bay? They pay the town. I agree. I understand they do. But I'm just saying if you were a town employee, would we want a town employee going up to tape Sister Bay events? Why not? They pay for it. Well, it's a, it's well, a we contractor. Could, we could certainly it. make that decision as an employee. I mean, right. we, could, we could decide. I, you know... <laughs> Right now, to to ask Laddie as an independent contractor to provide all the equipment. Well, I don't. I'm not suggesting that we have him do that. Thing. I'm simply. I'm suggesting that the next pieces of equipment that are acquired come out as a contractor. If he's a contractor, 
should be acquired by him as a contractor. The equipment that goes to his house should be acquired yeah. by him. But then we have, we have really have a mixed bag. We, we do, but I understand that. I mean, I give, I, I believe that we did that because nobody had the cash in their pocket in Laddie, and I understand that. So, but, okay. go ahead. The town pays me nothing for the equipment that I have in my house. Right, I understand that. Right. I'd be glad to continue along those lines, but I've got to buy a new camera or you've got to buy a new camera. I'm sorry. Well, the camera's a situation different. That's for here. Right. The, the computer is something I have to buy or you're going to buy for me either way. Because I'm very young guy's obsolete. And where does the... I'm enough as a contractor to support the buying all that equipment. Where does the PC uh, end up, Larry? If I'm using it, it's going to have to be at my home. That's where I do my work. That kind of work. Okay. That's where, it's, that's where my computer is right now at home. And they said the town pays me nothing for that work. Okay. Yeah. I mean, so we kind of have a hybrid. Right. I mean, it's kind of a hybrid model. Um, I don't know how, how it would be viewed by, by um, well, I don't know, internal revenue or who. Who actually monitors? I mean, uh, it's really a stretch uh, to be an independent contractor. I mean, we we have the server in the back room. Speaking uh, of that back room, how come you have a camera in that window back well, there? John, let's at least stay focused <laughs> on this portion for um, Mr. Chairman. Linda, let's we have an expert in our audience, Nick Weldon who is with Rural Insurance, who could probably give us some standards about independent contractors versus employee status. Put him on the spot. <laughs> if he, if like, he uh, so cared to do start, that. <laughs> if you care not to, that's a fine too. So. <laughs> As the conversation was turning out like this, he eventually more likely going to get back to me. <laughs> right. Um, but with an independent contractor versus uh, an actual time employee, um, currently now, as an independent, he should be covering his own insurance um, liability. It's funny he does the certificate of insurance, making sure that he is a true independent contractor. That way, when you guys do your workers' comp audit, he passes the nine-point test, which is just nine questions to certify he's an independent contractor, and that way he's not covered under workers' comp. If you bring him on as a town employee, <clears throat> and then anytime he's doing town business, he gets injured, that's going to be your guys' responsibility. But if he's an independent contractor, he's here, it, you guys may feel bad, but it wouldn't be your guys' responsibility if he slipped on the ice or did something on his own. But being a town employee, if somebody gets hurt on town, town business, they're covered under the workers' comp. Also with him being a town employee, you guys would have to figure out something with him recording in Sister Bay, because if he is recording in Sister Bay, is he doing independent contracting for them, using your equipment, he's got to rent it from you, or however you guys decide to do that, or is he, as a town employee, going up to Sister Bay, recording for Sister Bay, and then them billing you back, because if he's on the clock as a town employee, he needs to be covered while he's in Sister Bay doing work. Workers comp. For the workers comp. Right. So if something were to happen, um, car accident, like if I'm driving around in the country just stopping at farms and cold calling, doing work for rural, I'm covered under those work, their worker comp, no matter whether it's leading me to something, but if I'm on a way to do business, I'm covered. On the other hand, being a subcontractor, I'd have to carry my own worker's comp. If I slipped and fell, I'd have to be responsible for myself. So, um, just, have just, just based on I know you probably you don't have your your book here, but based on an annual salary of about seven thousand uh, dollars, would fifty dollars be reasonable as far as uh, workman's comp coverage for that? Adding it to your policy? Because um, we have what EMPs on. One There's two responders, but the county pays us back. Clerical. First it responders. might be under clerical, which is like. Right. Four cents per thousand. Mm -hmm. So adding to your policy would be fairly cost effective. It wouldn't cover much. All right. Or I mean, it wouldn't <coughs> cost much. It would cover him doing town business, but if, you know, cost-wise, it should be 
Um, I'm trying to pull up the commissioner's website right now, but clerical more than likely would be right. kind of what it kind of got lumped into. That's what I based on. We won't make a decision whether Laddie should be one or the other officially while, you know, with the, with the real chairman gone. <laughs> I'm not going to make that call for Leo. Well, that would have to come up in front of a budget hearing, too, I would well, think. Well, that's the kind of thing that will get further discussion, but I, I think the... And maybe you might want to chat with um, the city of Sturgeon Bay on the arrangements they have with their uh, contractor. And enlighten us a little bit further in terms of what's going on. Uh, I, my personal take is the camera, if he's a contractor, he should purchase the, ex the new piece of camera equipment that he's going to use um, at his expense. I could probably be convinced to go one way or the other with the PC. That's a little different situation, but the camera is the principal item that he uses to be a videographer. And we bite the bullet on the existing cameras because, yeah. as Letty has shared with us in the past, they're, they're to the point where we could probably make him a hell of an offer on multiple cameras, but we wouldn't necessarily have to. But, uh, and the equipment that's in residence here is our equipment, just like it is at the city of Sturgeon Bay. They have servers and other pieces of equipment that are there. They bo that belongs to the city, but they have a contractor that operates it. So. I, I guess my piece is if he's a contractor, the camera equipment should be purchased, I think, by Laddie and, you know, however arrangements we work out, but he owns that piece of equipment. The PC I could go either way with, and as far as the employer contractor conversation, I think that that would get delayed at least until the return of it. Well, you know, I mean, it, it does come down to kind of a hybrid model, and I don't know how that fits in, uh, in any whatever category, but uh, they have the town own part of the equipment and the videographer own part of the equipment to the kind of buddies to water. I mean, but you've only, you're down to, real, realistically, you're down to two or three items that, that enable him to be a videographer. He's got two cameras existing, right, Lenny, today? No, it's a backup set. Okay, so, I mean, it's really the camera that enables them. The editing, the stations, the equipment, the servers, and all the rest of that stuff belong to the, to the town and should remain as the town. I wouldn't expect that any contractor would come in and try and supply all that stuff. He's here as an operator, and he's a videographer, so he would need a camera in order to do that. I mean, his things would be a camera, a tripod, and a microphone that would enable you to at least be a videographer. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, I that's mean, just, that's, I mean, would you disagree with that, Laddie? Yes, because you mentioned the, the equipment, like the, the computer, that this is going to go home and get edited in my middle edit, admittedly, sure. Right. But it has to be done through a computer to get it on to the server. Tom doesn't pay me a penny to that. Yeah, it takes I'm not. Four hours. Yeah. yeah. Well, contract is actually due for renewal. Uh, yeah, I mean, you the two two bits to pay me for all these things. I don't mind buying equipment, but it's going to be double what it gets paid now. Yeah, so I mean, it would, for opening this up for, I mean, if we want to represent as more of a true uh, independent contractor, then my guess is Laddie wants to negotiate a new contract before requiring him to buy the equipment, which, as far as the budget goes, I mean, we certainly could eliminate that line item in our budget, but I think it's going to be reflected in the videographer's new negotiating contract. And as far as recording whatever uh, programs, um, you know, the, it, the public access channel has a lot of air time. And uh, I can sympathize with, with Laddie's position, um, killing up if we're going to have people actually watching the public access channel, um, they probably would like to watch, you know, something more than just a test pattern. Um, so that means yeah, I, I more programs. I mean, the amount of programming that's put on this uh, public access channel means probably a better audience. You know. I, I don't have any disagreement with any of that. Okay. I think where we're stuck here and it's not going to get resolved tonight is whether sure. we have a contractor or an employee. If it's a contractor, then it needs to be redefined as 
to what you do if, if it ended up being an employee, then you'd have to relook at the things he videotapes and figure out an arrangement to do it. And, and as I indicated, I, I don't think that's a, a call that we'll get into until Leo returns and we're able to um, delve into it to the next level. But I think those are a couple of the questions that you know have to be worked through. Um, well, the original question was, is the acceptance of, of moving the uh, capital budget from 2014 into 20 I would like to have the chair bring this back to what is agenda on the agenda. We are talking about the cable program directors and videographers agreement had nothing to do with the budget. Moving funds and oh. buying equipment was not included on this agenda. And if you wish to bring that up, you should agenda it for next month and put some there. numbers in front of us so we have something to look at and go from that point. Well, keep your, keep your sheet from tonight because it will be the same in February. This came out of the committee, this came out of the committee meeting. Um, if you wish not to act on it tonight, I, I would accept that. There's no way we could act on it tonight. It's well, not on the agenda. Okay. Then we can put it on next, next month's agenda, if, you, if that would be the wish of the rest of the group. Yep. I, I think someone, maybe in the meantime, we can try and redefine or be prepared at some point to redefine right. whether employee, contractor, et cetera, et cetera, where to go with that. Um, you, want, you want me to, for a February meeting to bring you a, a tentative employee contract based on the videographer contract? I think that that conversation is going to have to wait till Leo returns. Because I think he'll, Leo want, returns when? he'll back for the April meeting. <laughs> so... Uh, we, we, one problem we have is that we don't have a contract with Laddie right now. Okay. Well, I, thought, I was yeah, going to say, I thought we actually did that We last extended month. it for no. one month until he had a meeting, month. and you were supposed to clear up a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's like right. the two hours, what you said to, to find the two hours. I, you know the board is talking right now, sir? Okay. Let's, um, let's just do an extension for 60 days on this existing contract until we can schedule this for further meeting. Because, I mean, my, my question was, you know, I know, you talked about times and... What happens after the two hours and nobody could give me an answer? Right. Well, the $50 assistant? Or anything. I mean, is Laddie, is Laddie just... The he's, paid two hours? He's, he's paid uh, flat assistant. fee for the entire session. Okay, then the assistant... Is, gets fifty dollars for two hours, and what if they and work the, another the two hours? Is, is paid on on the basis of that fifty dollars per session as well for two hours. Yeah, and I mean that's that's basically what it says. It says flat fee of seventy five dollars for an event session, and also says the assistant shall be paid fifty dollars per session. So is it so is it a hundred? If it's three hours, is it one hundred and fifty dollars, and then a hundred dollars? It just says a single session is defined as being no longer than two hours. So Correct. Uh, the session will last two hours. So what if it lasts three hours? It says a single session is defined as longer, no longer than two hours. So, so the right, session in, will be right in the hours. middle of him interviewing at the pig wrestling, he's going to say, wait, my two hours is up? <laughs> that's what the contract says. Yeah, I know. That's what I had a problem with. I wanted to know what for and sundry items under this category. Okay, right. Does that seem? Uh, it, it does, and you, in doing that, you're delaying any purchases of the equipment. Correct. And I think that. Till so for how many days? Um, is Chuck, your yes. his motion till when? Ninety Chuck? days. Ninety days. Okay. Wow. So you want to put that in a formal motion, Chuck, for Linda's benefit? I'll. I'll Just extend the videographer, existing videographer's agreement for a period of 90 days from today. It's not really existing anymore, but okay. the previous well, videographer. Previous. Sorry. But that doesn't sort of address the, any capital purchases by the budget. Because we do have a budget line item. Yeah, but we can't but do anything about that tonight because it wasn't on the budget. No, but we have an existing 
Let's see what's on the existing budget right now. The existing budget for 2015, line item 15 is uh, 30, I already added another one on to it. What do I have on that sheet? 3,000? Delaying that? I, I, I would delay it because I think by making a decision to purchase a, a camera on a PC, we, we lock ourselves into the hybrid, the continuation of the hybrid for an indefinite period. And I think we should resolve that directionally at some point in time. You need uh, to know the employee status before you can start <coughs> purchasing more equipment. So I think we could bring that topic back. I'll move that we extend the videographer's agreement until April 21st meeting with the approval of Mr. Chapman, at which time, the, or by that time, the cable committee should have met and come up with the numbers necessary and the agreement. Can I ask a question now? I, I got a motion by Chuck. Do is there a second? Second. Second by John. All right. The question? That doesn't have to be. Well, the question is, is the committee has already, what I'm presenting to you today is the results of the committee meeting. And, and well, then you didn't do what we asked. <coughs> we need more numbers. over the contract. What numbers do you need? If you're going to uh, well, present uh, the fact that somebody should be an employee, okay. we need to know the rate of pay, the cost of benefits, mm -hmm. all the insurance, everything that goes with this. Okay. So put it together so then I can present it to us on a form so we can, I can do this. See, see what it is. That's, that's why I'm presenting it to me. Uh, and, and contrast that with the, well, let, let's settle the, the issue at hand, which is the motion by Chuck, mm -hmm. seconded by John, to extend until April 21st meeting. Is that correct? Yeah. All, right. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Okay. I think um, to Chuck's point, you're going to have to do some homework relative to this conversation as to contractor and employee, and I think it needs to be laid out from both facets. What's the advantage to having him as a contractor? What's the advantage to having it as an employee? And in specific, you have to get inside the things that he videotapes and what the impact of making him one or the other has to those particular um, roles mm -hmm. because it, it could get pretty muddy. I mean, as I understand things... It already is muddy. I know it's muddy, <laughs> but I mean, this is... This is it's got to be clarified, and, and to, to spend any more money or to put a stake well, in the ground at this point without knowing that, I think we're making mistakes. So, so let's leave it at that for... Are you asking Ben Laddie to present a contract to the company <coughs> based on... In purchasing equipment, too? I would say if it's, if it's Laddie's wish to become an employee of the town, no. then he should put together his contract as such. And okay. if not, his contract to the, to the alternative. Okay. And, as an uh, independent contract. I mean, if he's an employee, and we're furnishing all the equipment and, and everything, insurance and all, there would be a difference than it's if it was an independent contractor and he has to furnish all the equipment. All right. So, as of April 21st, this contract's been, the independent contract has been extended to April 21st. Everything right. status quo. All right. So no, this quo. independent contractor's thing has been extended till the end of the year. Videographer's that agreement. Videographer videographer's agreement was, agreement was to the end of the year of 2015. Okay, it, let's. I'm willing to renegotiate that. We need to look at this from both sides. Okay. You can't you can't come at it with the only the, the old Ben Franklin balance sheet of all the benefits of an employee. We have to look at both sides. Mm -hmm. What's the advantage as a contractor? What's the advantage as an employee? And then when you take those two and lay them out on a piece of paper, then you're going to have to tell us, obviously, the cost, but you're also going to have to address the issue of what does he 
videotape right. and goes on the net and goes on our channel and how to, and where is there going to be a, a potential for conflict or opportunity? So, so you, you need to lay out both sides of that question, and then we'll have the the information to to peel back the onion, so to speak, and get inside of it. So we actually have two agreements we're planning. One is the independent contractor agreement, mm -hmm. and the other is the videographer's agreement. Correct. Correct. Okay. And you want to keep those separate, or do you want to incorporate those together? Well, it well, kind of goes I mean, back. I, I they mean, they are separate. separate. They have to stay separate. Okay. But, so if you but, want, but you only know, until we get through the change in the class of employment. Right. That would change the contract. So if you want me to come back with the pros and cons of a video of an independent contractor versus an employee, right? I have to know. You were the one that brought him up that he wanted to be an employee, so you should do it. You're on the right path, Dick. It's, you just got to cover both sides of the street. Well, I mean, I don't want to bring something and then have it, you know, be a direct contradiction to what the board If he's wants. an employee, a, a videographer's uh, contract and all the rest of that stuff is almost immaterial. You'd have to lay out as an employee what his duties and responsibilities okay. are. If he's That's a contractor, then you have to lay out those. Okay. So, I mean, it's going to be up to Laddie then to, for Help example, you define that, I guess. A new independent contractor agreement. Because I'm not going to develop an independent contractor agreement for him since he's going to be the independent contractor presenting it to the board. Right. We don't, it, this is kind of a, a backwards approach that we've been using. We present an independent contractor's agreement to the independent contractor. But it was something that Tom Gurman, your predecessor, and Laddie worked through. This was not an, uh, an independent effort on either one of their behalfs, and we understood that. But. And, and I don't expect that it would be even now. I would expect you'd have some input into it because you wouldn't want Laddie coming in here with something that that you know from day one wouldn't fly anywhere. So you're going to have to have that interchange, and he's going to have to take the lead on right. on it. But you're going to want to be part of that conversation. So he's going to he's going to present the independent contractor. Agreement. The independent contractor's agreement is signed, sealed, delivered, but I guess you have to present. If, if he wants to be a town employee, he has to present. Plus, where is it going to come out of the budget? We've already budgeted for... Yeah, but you froze, you froze our budget. There you uh, go. Uh, let's not confuse his task. You froze greater. our budget. <coughs> we put a temporary hold on it. <laughs> All right, let's move on. If you have some questions on it, feel free to call. All right. I'll be happy to help. That Hopefully. All right. New business, discussion and action. Well, we actually have the word action here, too. So we have a town hall rental fee. I have to find my own agreement here on the land of the lost. Okay, <clears throat> let me uh, explain briefly the town hall rental comparison cost, which Linda prepared for us, did a nice job. Um, we've had a couple issues in the past with some of the renters, so we were trying to update and understand whether or not um, we were charging the correct amount, given sometimes the amount of cleaning effort that had to take place and or other things after a renter had used the property. So I'd ask Linda if she'd go out and <clears throat> kind of get an assessment as to where we stood. As you can see here from this document, it's, uh, we're, right in the, we're right in the mix. We're not too high, we're not too low. Um, you know, it doesn't look like we should make any changes. We have some issues with some renters, and I think some of the other communities have over the past as well. Um, the one thing that we didn't put on here, but one thing that I think we should chat about a little bit is we've had some issues with security. Uh, we get charged by the sheriff when they come out if the alarm system goes off. Uh, <clears throat> and um, I think if we have that kind of situation happen after we've given someone the key fob and instructions, and if we get charged, we may want to consider retaining the security deposit to offset the charge for the sheriff's visit. Um, How much do you charge us? Charge for the sheriff's visit? 50 or 100 bucks, depending on how many there were. And I think the first one is 50, and then it goes to 100. Is that right, Linda? I don't recall us getting um, any bills within the last luck. few years. We've been pretty lucky. We've been pretty lucky because we called them and done everything else under the sun. but. 
at any rate, that was one consideration. But the other thing is, here's where we stand. Uh, if you take a look at the second page, why we looked at it a little bit, under rental income and town hall costs, the rental increase year over year was $330, but the cleaning costs were up 7.5. So um, we just wanted to make sure that we weren't losing any more. We're not really going to ever make money. It's not our intention, but we wanted to make sure we weren't costing more than we should. So I think one thing we should maybe do, do, do to what has happened in the, in the just not just in this future here, uh, some of the damage that was caused and security problems that, that did happen. It might not be a bad idea to raise the security deposit and then retain that security deposit until the place is actually checked out and cleaned up. And if the cleaning costs go over normal, they would be deducted from those charges or, the, or that fee. I think we, we have a broken fire alarm that wasn't noticed until uh, right after the fact. And now the, the thing comes up that we're going to spend several hundred dollars to have this thing repaired. And you know, if the uh, security deposit has already been get, given back, you're going to have a tough time trying to collect it. So uh, if we would retain that security deposit on, until everything has checked out, and then go from that point. Who does the actual checking? That's right. Well, we have we have a group that comes in and cleans, and they do their normal cleaning. If if they complain that the place was a mess and it took extra work, uh, you know, we we pay for it. So. Can I ask a question? I know I'm way off, but Linda, do you check after each person, each group leaves? Is that how, Linda? Yeah. Is that, is that yeah. how it works? Yes, Linda, go ahead. Yes. Um, for instance, we had it uh, rented on Christmas Eve. I came up on Christmas morning and took a peek through. It was not quite up to, it needed some additional work. So in that case, we did retain a portion of the security deposit to cover some of our cleaning costs. Um, yes, there was an instance with the alarm. Our chairman, vice chairman, is aware of that as well. Um, I ordered the part. I replaced it. I'm waiting for an invoice. I do certainly intend to turn that invoice over to the rental party. There have only been two, maybe three occasions where I felt it necessary to retain a portion or all of the security deposit. So if you, if you think it's okay, then it doesn't... You don't call the people in to clean. So they, there would be um, no additional cleaning charge. No, the, no they, these people come in and clean on a regular basis. They clean the town hall. But if there was a party the night before and the place is extra dirty, we pay extra to have them clean it up. Because it takes them longer to do it. Right. So we have what we might want to say is our normal monthly cleaning and maintenance bill. I mean, they go through and do an exceptional job. I mean, they, they do things like literally cleaning the chairs, the undersides of the chairs where they assorted uh, frosting and bubble gum and other wonderful things happen. So, I mean, they really go above and beyond. But there have been instances where we've had issues with the overall cleanliness, not to that degree, but you know, in terms of what's up. And, you know, maybe the easy way to do that is, and I don't know if anybody's questioned you or not, Linda, on the security deposit, but we can either change the amount or we can change the verbiage to reflect um, things such as the security system. If there's a fault, we could retain portion of that if, they're, if we're billed by the sheriff. Yeah, you know, right. Something along those lines. Right. And that, that could certainly be a sentence or two that we could add. If there right. are any additional, if there's any additional damage or or um, parts need replacing after the fact, you will be billed for that and you will be responsible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, is if somebody doesn't <coughs> check it right away, how are you going to say, well, that party broke it? I mean, if there's other That's people in here, right. yeah. say That's we have a meeting or something. Mm -hmm. What did you break? Uh, mm -hmm. Nothing yet. And I know we, you know we, of. <laughs> we have that covered um, because 
if we have back-to-back -back rentals, like a Saturday and a Sunday, like for instance on Christmas Eve, right. we did have it rented on Christmas Day as well. So if we have back-to-back, -back, either I or Don or Judy Maas, who are our cleaning people, and like our chairman said, they do an exceptional job. They're very conscientious of everything. Um, they will know if something is askew. So we do check between rentals to make sure that the responsible party gets the bill and not someone else. Okay. I mean, we've got a great facility, and we just want to try and keep it that way without incurring additional costs. So maybe we can just, Lynn and I can mm -hmm. work on maybe just tweaking the security piece. But if somebody asks you, you've got a table and that's relevant in terms of what we charge. So if you have somebody that says you guys are too high or too low or whatever, you have a document to refer to for that purpose as well. Mm -hmm. So, so you're going to keep the security bonds and as it is? Uh, unless you guys think we should change it, I, no, I, I, I don't. I don't, no, I don't think there's any need to. I think we just change the verbiage bur on burden on those people who right. you know, do a good job, and you know. So that's the, the trouble with anything, though, is, is you have the people that abide by the rules and pay the fees and, and take care of the place and clean it, and then you get one group that comes in and spoils it. So. Okay. <coughs> Next item of business is the Door County Child Care Services discontinuance of operation. This is almost more of an FYI. Uh, the agreement with this organization was if, if, if and when they decided to go out of business, which is what they're doing, there is a right of first refusal to purchase the property. And um, we're thinking it'd be a great spot for a videographer's uh, lab for 38,000 plus. <laughs> Forget it. At any rate, <coughs> I don't think anyone here is going to be exercising the right to purchase the old school building. So uh, how did we get first options to buy this place? Uh, you know, at we, Door County the county of has Door. the right to it, and the county asked whether or not the town was interested. Okay. Because it is in our town. So if the town would be interested, the county would purchase it and sell it back to us for thirty-eight thousand. Well, why don't they buy it for thirty-eight thousand? We'll buy it for a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a good idea. Okay, <coughs> we certainly process that one. Okay. Okay. Uh, next one's an kind of an informational thing. Again, it's uh, this one's a little confusing, mm -hmm. but it talks about the uh, DOT hosting. Uh, a meeting to discuss local event detours and future improvement expectations. And it's got to do with signage and the manning of detours for local events. So there's a meeting that's going to be held in Egg Harbor on January 20th at 10 a.m. And I think for our benefit, if we did another sesquicentennial, we might be interested, but more than likely it's uh, going to be a ways off. So I would say it might be the turkey trot. Turkey trot, yeah. you know, if anything, I think that would be the only one that I think that we close the streets for, right? School, yeah, school. Right. The school, school. Yeah, so the Christmas parade, the, uh, Christmas yeah. Parade. So if there's something here, actually, the school might attend that and let us know. So, okay. Uh, Door Kiwani County Legislative Days. Uh, if, as a reminder, last year we budgeted a thousand dollars towards supporting this activity, which is where we go to the go to Madison <coughs> as a group uh, with a common set of issues. Uh, the thousand dollar donation that we make to this the group also entitles us to have two people that uh, can go to the event. Linda went last year; was one of those people. Um, and they're asking here that uh, if we have any common issues to identify them. I don't know. That off the top of my head, I don't know if we have any as a town that we might like to submit, but we can do that and turn that document in. So if anybody has any thoughts with respect to that, we can either capture them now, bring it back, or you can share those thoughts with Linda and we can recap them back to Rob Burke. Anybody have any enlightening idea or thoughts, opinions? Yeah. yeah. So we, we've already. Committed $1,000? Yes, and we've done this over the last, I don't know how many years that we've done it. Biannual. Uh, so yeah. we have, we did budget $1,000 for 2015. Actually, the check was in the voucher years, approval right. tonight. I think one of the things, and I, I'm not positive of this, but it wasn't one of the things that we got support on was the water, the B 
Beach monitoring was yeah. one of the activities. Beach monitoring, the dredging, um, when I went to Madison oh, two yeah. years ago, the dredging, what the water level was of a heavy topic. It's yeah. a very interesting process. You get to meet many of the legislatures and tour the Capitol. And, and if you're thinking of running for office, you, know, you might be able to go on one of these events and learn more. Tony? <laughs> It's all right. Okay. Comprehensive plan annual review. I think we've actually had this before just as a topic, John. Were you going to eventually put this with your committee when you can have a quorum? And well, yeah. There, there is uh, in certain parts of the comprehensive plan, there's stuff that we have to do, we should do, and whatever. So when we get the a committee together, we're going to have to look to see if we're behind a little bit or ahead or something. I know there was some things that we looked at that needed updating. So, so this is you like have a, a shortage of FYI people. FYI, right now. Correct. FYI. So this is probably going to be brought back like in the April May time frame. Uh, yeah, I would say because. Stan or Mike, <laughs> we is going to be back on April 1st, so after April. And then why don't we just make a note and we'll pick this up in like May, oh. bring when it back Victoria in May. Gonna come back I again? think after April. After April? Or maybe April 1st. Okay, so it sounds like sometime in April we could have a meeting. Okay. So we'll put it, we'll bring it forward to, to May if it works out at that Well, point. it's going to, there is some of the stuff that takes a while, so you might want to bump that back. Okay, well, let's um, see what happens. It might with take it. one or two meetings to get something clarified. Or, okay. So put it at June or July. All righty, we will do that. We have covered John and Jacqueline Sawyer, so we're good there. Uh, next item of business is the approval of vouchers, claims, and bills. Has everybody had an opportunity to review and sign, yes. sign those things? I move that we approve the vouchers, bills, and claims for December 16, 2014 through January 19 of 2015. And is there a second to that motion? Second. A motion by Chuck, second by Dick, to approve the vouchers, bills, and claims. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Non motion carried. Okay. Last item, quickly go through the correspondence. If anybody has a question, uh, we did, I, I was totally surprised by this, that the Nature Conservancy sent us a gift, gift check, a $100 check, in grateful appreciation for providing fire protection for properties in their area, which I thought was a, a nice position to take. Obviously, they're under no obligation. Um, McClellan Holdings, LLC, it's this note, if you don't know, it's a mute point. Um, the current owners are vacating the property. Not the current owners, the current lessee is vacating the property, so nothing will be happening with that. Um, Thomas of Espoo Comprehensive, or the county is giving you an update to their comprehensive plan. What about the liquor license there? Are we just going to wait for it? Well, they, they have the liquor license until June, huh? So, we'll get another opportunity, I'm sure, to figure out what to do with that. <coughs> Our um, Final calculation for general transportation aids, $187,000 paid out quarterly. Look forward to getting that $46,000. And then there's our bill for fire protection with the city. And then a footnote here about the, a gentleman in the back by the name of Nick, who's we've become very conversant with already. Uh, note on the Humane Society, the intake sheet. This is how many dogs, cats, and other animals. Do we have any idea, just out of curiosity, because somebody always asks it, how many dogs our catcher caught? They show nine. Does that seem close to what Mark had, just out of curiosity? Uh, let's see. You pay Mark $35 when he picks up a dog. That seems... Pretty close. Oh, yeah, there was maybe, maybe five or six that he actually charged us for. Okay. Just curious. 
other than other than having an abundance of cats. Yeah, how can there be 42 stray cats? Well, you know, it doesn't take much if you go to one residence where they have a problem with cats and they they bring them in. I mean, you see in the paper all the time where these people, you know, have homes with tons of unfortunate animals in them and they they take control of them. Tourism tax uh, collection eighty nine hundred and sixteen dollars for the month of October. That was kind of nice. And Agricultural Community Engagement Forum, Lean Leadership. I thought this was interesting. The Lean Leadership in Government is something that Walker uh, would like us to do more of. I thought we're pretty lean already. It doesn't let us increase our budget by anything. That's how much leaner can you get? I don't know. Right. And that's it. So, announcements, Wisconsin DOT detour, detour information meeting, which we talked about on January 29th. Next board supervisors meeting, Monday, February 23rd. And are there any items that we need to put on the agenda for next month other than what we've already discussed? Hearing none. The last item on the agenda would be a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. I'll second that. Uh, finally, somebody stepped up to the plate. <laughs> motion by Dick, second by John. To adjourn, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carried. We are adjourned.